Welcome to Winston-Salem in Business. And now your host, Tracy Meisner. Hi, my name is Tracy Meisner. I'm here with Roger Sheck from Linwood Builders. And today on Winston-Salem in Business, we're going to talk with Roger about the construction industry, what got him in there. And uh, so sit back and uh, enjoy. So, Roger, um, how did you get into construction? So I grew up doing this with my dad. My dad had a, one of the last really great jobs that you could get. He worked in the oil field. Okay. And he always wanted to be a contractor, um, but he had made good money and couldn't just switch gears. So he did it for fun. We did um, additions at our house, put roofs on at my grandmother's, fences, anything and everything. So I did it helping him. That's, that's how it started. Okay. And then somewhere along the line, you got into the film business. What year was that? So in high school, a good friend of mine, um, I, I was into photography, I was into art, and he saw some of my photos and said, have you ever thought about being a filmmaker? And I said, no, that's, that's Steven Spielberg, you can't do that, how do you do that, you know, Arts Institute, and uh, it was just such a foreign concept to me growing up where I did and how I did. Um, but as I started reading books and thinking of how I could do it, I... I started piddling around, made a little short film, and um, got accepted to the Oklahoma Summer Arts Institute, which it was the first year they had a film program. And uh, the teacher was Dale Pollock, who was the current dean of the School of the Arts, and uh, Robert Collins, who was the cinematography chair. So they said, come look at our school. I did, and I went home and told my dad, that's what I wanna do, I wanna go be a filmmaker and he was not supportive. Um, <laughs> he didn't see the vision. He was very worried about me going, you know, from Oklahoma to North Carolina, being by myself, all that stuff. But, um, you know, I, I had to try it. Right. And then you wound up in LA and working in the film industry. Are you married at this point? Yes, I got married uh, right after I graduated from the School of the Arts here at Graylin. Okay. Um, so I'm starting to see the connection, how you got from Oklahoma to Winston-Salem. Um, so you're in the film industry, and what happens? Why, why, the, why are you here? I, uh, I wanted to be Quentin Tarantino. I wanted to be the auteur. I wanted to write, direct, produce, control my product. And um, that's a lot harder than a 23-year-old thinks it is. And when you get out there and start trying to do it, and you find out that it's a very vampiric society out there that basically everybody wants to use you for their projects. They're not interested in your project. Uh, making movies is very expensive. So getting the money and the capital and the people to do it is hard. So I got stuck in reality TV, um, started as a casting camera. Uh, I ran the camera in casting sessions. And then that went on to what was called a predator at the time, which is a producer video editor. So I would go out and shoot sizzle reels, things to try to get TV shows made. So I'd shoot them, interview, cut them together, try to sell it to a network with another guy. And I got a job offer to work on um, The Kendra Show, which was, uh, if you remember back, Hugh Hefner had three blonde girlfriends. Yes. Um, I walked out of the CNN building and I called my wife and I said, I hate this, I don't wanna do it. She said, well, don't. So I owe my wife everything for letting me try filmmaking then, letting me get out of it, you know, so. I started a sports photography company. We did AYSO photos out in Bakersfield and all over California. Um, right at the time the iPhone came out. So sales went from $27,000 in one day to the next year it was $16,000 to the next year it was $6,000. People quit buying photos and um, 
I still had a contact in reality TV. She was a casting producer. Sarah was a great friend of mine. She called me and said, hey, I heard you bought a house. Do you want to be on TV? And I said, absolutely not. Let me ask my wife. So I asked my wife, obviously. We were on House Hunters Renovations. Mm -hmm. They remodeled our kitchen, and uh, my wife asked me, she said, can you really do this stuff, um, the remodeling thing? And I said, it's been a long time, but I think we can figure it out. So she and I remodeled the two bathrooms. My company was failing, and her father said, why don't you come back out here and do this out here where it's cheaper? Start flipping houses. So um, I said... And, and my dad goes, you know, if this film thing doesn't work out, you can always move back to North Carolina and be a general contractor. Because wow. he had seen my work at the house that I had done. He said, you're good. You could do this for a living. And I, I looked at him and I said, I'm going to shoot myself if I have to do that. <laughs> so a month later, I had sold my house and moved to North Carolina and bought two foreclosures and started flipping houses. And from there, I started a Facebook fan page. People saw it. They liked it. I started doing small you know, remodel jobs, and um, that's kind of how it started until people really noticed me, and I got a job offer to work in Brookberry Farms, and you had to have a general contractor's license because the job was so big, and mm -hmm. I tested and got it, and um, that's how I started. And now you're with Linwood Builders. Uh, are you a co-owner, co an owner? Uh, there are four partners of Linwood Builders, okay. and I am one of them. I was the first one that David approached um, and accepted about becoming a partner. Okay. And describe for me and for our audience, what is Linwood Builders? What do you guys do? We are a um, high-end renovation company. We specialize in unique, uh, modern, or very high-end construction. Okay. Lots of millwork, um, things like that. And so how is construction related to the film industry? How do, how does, how do you make that correlation between being a director, writer, producer to being a GC? Uh, in my brain, it's almost identical because as a writer, director, producer, you're working with um, other industry professionals to create this product that's in your head and hopefully make it better through the collaboration with them. Um, the greatest thing that ever happened to me is when I started working with an editor and quit editing my own work um, because it let me see my work could be better by utilizing an editor that just thinks editing all the time, you know, and I'm right. trying to spread myself thin like Robert Rodriguez and do everything. Right. But I think if you really stay in your lane, so I'm a general contractor, I can do trim carpentry, but trim carpenters should be doing trim carpentry because that's what they love. That's what they're amazing at. And I'm good, but I'm not amazing. I'm a much better general contractor. Okay. Um, so, what areas of North Carolina does Linwood specialize in? We really stay in Winston-Salem, Kernersville, um, Clemens, the, the immediate 30-minute area. Okay. Just because it's very hard to service and maintain quality outside of that area with the level of quality that we deliver. And are you guys, do you find yourselves working with the same people over and over and over again? As far as clients or uh, no, subs? subs. That's another unique thing about us is we don't, we don't have five drywall guys. I've got one guy because I know what he's going to deliver. I know his pricing. I know what he's going to stand behind if there's an issue. Um, same plumber. We have really two plumbers that we use in the company. Um, couple painters. We're, our, our sub base is some of the best and we like to keep it that way. Okay. What's the most difficult hurdle to overcome being a GC in today's market? The cost of everything. Um, people 
you know, when a car is $70,000, but five years ago it was $30,000, people for some reason accept that. But the fact that it costs $300 a square foot now to build, people struggle with that. So when you break it down, they understand, but it's just that initial being able to explain to them why things cost what they cost now. Okay. Um, so if I were going to renovate a house or let's say a kitchen, which is probably the most expensive room in the house, ideally it's the biggest selling point of the house, what should the homeowner be looking at when they're starting to investigate and talk to general contractors? A general contractor is almost like a marriage. I think you really got to find the right general contractor because it absolutely will not be apples to apples ever under any circumstances. There's different um, subcontractors, there's different providers, there's different management level and experience. Um, we have full-time superintendents. So when the plumber shows up, uh, the superintendent is talking to him versus the plumber shows up and says, hey, homeowner, where, how high do you want your shower head? You know, and then the homeowner becomes the superintendent on a job. So you just need to, and that's going to be less expensive, you know, but right. you need to find out what experience you want. Right. Okay. Um, and then talk to me about, do you guys offer any financing in your construction or do you have a bank that you kind of steer people to or how does that work? We don't offer financing. Um, the homeowner usually secures their own financing. It just brings in a level of complication that we're not really set up to deal with. Mm -hmm. We do work with banks when a homeowner has one. There's documents we have to provide and things like that. But as far as a direct referral, use this financer, we're not like the big developers that do that. Okay. And what is, how do you get your business? What, what do you find your clients coming from? Where, where are they coming from? A lot of word of mouth. Um, and honestly, I am a huge proponent of... Uh, online marketing, you know, I, I started marketing filmmaking when it was called MySpace. So <laughs> I went through Facebook, I built a million dollar business with $2,000 of Facebook ads a year. Um, you just have to know how to use it. It's, it's its own art form, really, uh -huh. advertising on social media. But we do a ton of social media um, content, I believe, in putting out free good content, not hire me content, but educational content, which is what, if you look at my personal uh, Instagram, it's tips for homeowners and DIY and things like that so that you don't get in trouble down the road. Um, and actually, uh, true story, I found you and I was captivated by your before and afters. Um, one of the things that I liked was that I saw the picture from the same angle in your before and afters so I can go, oh, that window wasn't there, but now I see what it does to this room. Um, and then you're right, the online marketing that I saw from Instagram, and what's the best, what, what is your Instagram handle? So mine is at Roger Sheck, uh, R-O-G-E-R-S-C-H-E-C-K, and then the company is at Linwood Builders, okay. L-Y-N-N-W-O-O-D Builders. Okay. Um, and I don't even know, I guess I got you from your personal one. Probably. And y y you have to check this out because he does, uh, Roger does offer all of these tips that if you're thinking about renovating your house, things that you don't even think about, he addresses what you should look for in a contractor. It's, it's just not about a guy in a truck. Uh, your house is your biggest investment. And why would you trust 
anybody but a professional with your biggest investment. What do you see the homeowners doing after they've remodeled their kitchen? Do you, do you see them wanting to do other parts of their house? Oh yeah, we have many repeat clients where we will do a kitchen and then a bathroom or other small projects throughout. We don't take on a lot of small projects unless it's for repeat clients. Gotcha. A deck or something like that. You know? Okay. Interesting. That's um, And again, how do we get in touch with Linwood Builders? What's your website? Uh, check out our website. It's linwoodbuilders.com. There is a contact form on there. Our phone number's on there. Uh, and we, you know, we love meeting people and talking you through the process. You know, we, we want the job, obviously, but I'd rather educate you and um, make sure you have all the information. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, don't go away, folks, because I've got a little treat that I do with my, uh, my interviewees. I'm not even going to tell Roger what it is because he'll figure it out. Steve Jobs or Elon Musk? Elon Musk. Rabbit, goat, or a turtle? Rabbit. Words or actions? Actions. Cake or pie? Pie. Meat, fish, or veggies? Meat. Beach or mountains? Beach. Wine, beer, or cocktails? Beer. Winston-Salem, High Point, or Greensboro? Winston-Salem. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Mac or PC? Mac. Wood or metal? Wood. Nails, screws, or weld? Screws. Favorite smell? Uh, that one got me. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, well, just so you know, folks, um, this studio is located directly behind Camino Bakery. And hopefully when Roger walks out of here, <laughs> he'll know what his favorite smell is. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn? Instagram. Logic or emotion? Logic. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Dark chocolate. My favorite question. Favorite podcast host? You, Tracy. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.